about myself and kind of what we do at the seminary. I, I find a lot of people don't really know what we do there or what it's all about. So um, uh, I'll give you a little uh, heads up as to what goes on behind the doors of uh, St. John's Seminary. Um, so I handed out uh, the St. John's Seminary magazine um, and uh, some uh, support vocations bracelets and <laughs> you can hand them on to someone that uh, uh, might uh, uh, support it through, um, through wearing them, um, and some vocations cards. So, uh, so oh, let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Take, O Lord, and receive my entire liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my whole will. All that I am and all that I possess, you have given me. I surrender it all to you, to be disposed of according to your will. Give me only your love and your grace. With these I will be rich enough, and will desire nothing more. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I'm from Derry, New Hampshire. I went to Pinkerton Academy. And... Um, and then I attended uh, the University of Hartford's uh, Heart School of Music. I studied music education and received a bachelor's in, uh, in music ed. I started out as a double major of music performance and music ed, and then um, I dropped my performance major uh, with the violin. I, I play the violin, and so uh, we're going to end today with the Ave Maria. So I'll play the song later. Um, and I find myself in college, I was kind of twiddling my thumbs, wondering if this is what God was calling me to, and I still didn't really, I still didn't really know what his plan was for me. So, uh, so I, became, I became a teacher, I taught here in the Manchester school system for, uh, for five years, taught at Hillside uh, Middle School and um, Parkside, um, and uh, you know, five elementary schools, and part-time at Pinkerton Academy. I did all string, so this was all orchestra classes and string classes, and, um, and I bought a house on, um, on Maurice Street, uh, which I still own, and I'm just renting it out, because um, um, priests can own property. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I, you know, I kind of had my life uh, in order, or, or so I thought, you know, I had the job, you know, I had the house, and... Um, but there was something inside of me that uh, still wasn't at peace with uh, uh, what I was pursuing in life. So, um, so after much prayer and discernment, I decided to talk to the vocations director here in Manchester. His name is Father Jason Jalbert. And uh, I didn't tell anyone about it, but I said, look, Father, I, uh, I think I might have a calling to the priesthood, and I'm really not sure. Um, what do I do? He said, well, think about it, <laughs> and come back to me in a few months, and if you still feel the same way. And so this went on for a couple of years. Um, so, so finally I said, look, Father, uh, I, you know, I, I really feel like God's calling me to further discern my, uh, the priesthood. Um, so, uh, so, so I entered uh, the seminary after five years of teaching, and uh, I'm in my second year now at St. John's. Um, so I'm a second pre-theologian. So there's, uh, there's ba basically uh, seminary is six years uh, total uh, for most guys. Uh, there's two years of pre-theology and four years of theology. Um, so right now I'm in the second year of pre-theology, so we do a lot of philosophy in that time. Um, um, however, some guys might come into seminary with backgrounds in, in philosophy, so they, they go right to theology. But for most guys, it's six years. So including this year, I have five more years to go, so um, please pray for me. So I first came to know, uh, to, to really um, uh, know Jesus personally at a Steubenville East Conference in Rhode Island. Um, or actually, at this time it was in Attleboro. Um, but um, this was freshman year in high school. I went to this conference, and at the end of the conference, they call the guys up that they think might have a calling to the priesthood. They say, oh, any, any guy that thinks he might have a calling, come on up. And, There'd be, you know, 50 or 60 guys that go up, and uh, I never went up because I was too nervous. <laughs> and I mean, year after year, I'd go to this conference, and uh, the seed was planted, though. And, and eventually, I, I got up enough courage, and, and I went up, you know, and it was a big moment for me to, to go up 
there and uh, come face to face with this realization that, that yeah, I think God might, might be calling me. Um, so, so that grew and grew, and then uh, and uh, so here I am at St. John's. So, um, so that's kind of my personal story, my personal witness of uh, how I entered seminary. Uh, so, to tell you a little bit about this seminary, it was chartered in 1883, and uh, since then there's been over 3,000 men who have been ordained uh, to the priesthood. Um, right now we have 85 guys um, in seminary. Um, they come from Massachusetts and um, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, Rhode Island, um, so there's a wide variety of, of guys there. Um, the ages, uh, the, the youngest guys are 22, and the oldest, we have a few guys in their 40s, and um, you know, most, you know, mostly 22 to about 35. Um, and uh, there's also uh, a seminary for late vocations, Blessed John the 23rd, um, that's also in Boston, and that's for um, that's for men in their uh, say like you know anything older than 40s, like 50s, 60s. So, uh, but uh, so this is um, uh, so this is for uh, you know younger men uh, discerning the vocation. Um, also, um, we also have a close tie to uh, Time, which is the Theological Institute of New Evangelization, uh, which Derek is uh, a member of or a participant. Um, do you want to briefly tell him something? Oh, think about it, or uh... yeah, sure. It's just uh, it's just the um, sort of lay, yeah, an, another lay branch of St. John's Seminary. So um, I'm going for my master's in theology. Um, I register my classes through St. John's. I, uh, you know, it's it's kind of all the same thing. It's just a separate building down the street. Um, I guess a lot of the professors are the same. Actually, I think David Franks teaches at yep. for you guys. Um, Father Paul Rick, um, I have right now, I think also teaches there. So there's a lot of crossover between the two, and um, the, the Time Institute is just um, an opportunity for, uh, you know, to, to kind of pool resources, especially in the Archdiocese of Boston, and um, get the solid formation uh, for the laity as, as well as the, uh, the, the priest of the seminarians. So. Yeah. Thanks, Derek. So yeah. we're really uh, happy to have this uh, connection with time. It's, it, it adds a lot to the seminary community. Um, uh, we have a seminary uh, library, the Theological Library. It has over 17,000 volumes, uh, 12,000 of which are rare or unique volumes. So we'd never be able to read them all, but it's, it's certainly a good resource. Um, so in seminary, uh, we're formed um, in four different ways, and these are kind of like the, the core pillars of seminary formation for, for men discerning the call. Uh, and that is um, human formation, spiritual formation, intellectual formation, and pastoral formation. So human, intellectual, spiritual, and pastoral. And so they try to form us in all four of those pillars. Um, so there's a director of human formation, a director of intellectual formation, and, and so forth. Um, I, I think a common um, mistake in seminary is that guys put so much time and energy into the intellectual formation, and they're so concerned about grades and, and classes, and so it's, it's easy to get into that mentality. Um, so it's important for us as seminarians to remember that there are four pillars and not one. We're told that, that quite often. Um, so just to go through a typical day at seminary, um, Actually, before I do that, I'll, I'll show you some pictures so you can get an idea. Um, so this is the seminary. This is our chapel right here. Um, and these are all the living quarters. There's four floors, one, two, three, four. Uh, floors two to four are the living quarters. And then the first floor is all offices and uh, the public. Um, and this, actually, this is our refectory. So this is where we eat. And then... Um, this is actually BC, uh, Boston College. Uh, the seminary, we used to own a lot more property, but we had to sell a lot of it uh, after the scandals and, and everything happened, unfortunately. So the only thing we own now is, is this here. Um, but we used to own not only all of this, but there's multiple buildings uh, along the campus. 
and it's a beautiful area. And, and um, you know, we play football up there in the field, and uh, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, so that's uh, that's the seminary. This is another picture. This is our courtyard. So my room. Let's see. This is this one right here. <laughs> I have a nice little view of the courtyard. The refectory on the right, and then the chapel in the middle. And this is uh, the day I moved in, uh, or shortly thereafter. Is, uh, there's one day of the year that your families can come up and, and see the rooms. Uh, so this was on family day, my, my parents got to come up. Um, so this is a typical room in seminary. I pretty much have my back towards the door, so... It's not too big, but it's not too small either. It, it does the job. We have everyone has a little sink, which is great. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so this is a typical uh, second floor hallway. Um, so it kind of looks like a college, except uh, it's a lot different. <laughs> uh, some pictures around. This is the front lobby. This is what we call the great hallway. We'll have, uh, sometimes we'll have, um, you know, uh, social functions up and down this hallway. They'll have appetizers on one side, maybe some people serving wine on the, on the left side for special occasions. So that can be a fun. So this is one of the classrooms, uh, one of the bigger classrooms. This is Medeiros. All the, all the rooms in seminary are named after for, former Cardinals and bishops. Another classroom. This is uh, a picture from philosophy. <laughs> Good luck reading any of that. I, I'm sure can. Uh, this is uh, we have a workout room where the guys can work out and, and blow off some steam and, uh, and work on that human formation pillar to staying healthy. Uh, this is a common room, so we have a pool table, a, a TV, um, a bar there. Um, so Thursday nights are usually the nights that we all get together and kind of socialize and, and unwind a little bit. The keg is not in use. <laughs> it's just there for decoration, you could say. <laughs> uh, this is our chapel. It's Beautiful. We're very blessed. This was an addition. I think this was in the 1940s, I think, is when the chapel was made. And they just restored it. Uh, they had a huge restoration uh, the summer of 2012. So it's just, uh, just beautiful. beautiful. This is where I stand when I canter. I, I canter on Tuesday nights. Um, so. this is, uh, above, the, above the altar is the... Um, uh, the Pentecost, uh, the scene from the Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit the dove is just beautiful. It really, uh, it's just shiny gold. It's gorgeous. That's uh, flipped around the other way, so I was looking at the organ. So that's my dad, my brother on the left, and, and I'm on the right. That's our refectory, so that's where we eat. We call it the Harry Potter. Uh, <laughs> This is me uh, having a little fun on the second floor. <laughs> uh, and uh, this was our football. We had a football team. And, uh, so we, uh, we have a good time. We play a lot of sports. Every year we go to the uh, March for Life in, in Washington, D.C. So this is enormous. You know, just thousands and thousands of people. Very powerful. And then we went on a, a pre-theology retreat, so this was all the uh, pre-theology guys last year. We went out to Maine. And this is uh, Bishop Farmer, um, who was my spiritual director last year, but he just became the bishop of Oakland, California. So uh, they shipped him out of uh, seminary. Um, and he's a very, uh, very good guy, a very holy man. Um, we're, we're sad to see him go. So those are, those are the pictures. So just to give you a, a, a typical day in seminary, we, uh, we get up, uh, well, some guys get up earlier than others, but 
We have to be in chapel at 7 o'clock, so I get up at 6.55. <laughs> out the door, you know. um, and uh, so we start off with morning prayer, uh, which we get from the breviary. I don't know if anyone uh, is familiar with the breviary or the office, um, office of readings, uh, the, the divine office. Um, I wasn't until I got into seminary, but it is uh, you know, one of the, the major prayers of the church. And it used to be that only priests and religious would we do the office, but now it's uh, you know, highly encouraged that all, uh, all within the church, uh, lay people involved, also um, do the, the office. It's, it's a great prayer. Um, they, we, we get it from the Jewish um, tradition, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a great way to start, start off the day. Um, and so we do morning prayer out of the office, followed by mass, and then we have breakfast together, and all our meals are together, so we eat we eat together uh, three times a day. And then uh, we have classes in the morning after that. And then we meet in the chapel for noonday examine, uh, where we kind of examine the day and, and um, things going on in our high heart throughout the day. Um, and then we have more classes, classes, classes. And then, uh, then we have evening prayer in the chapel, followed by holy hour. Um, and then meetings are, uh, or whatnot are, Rector's conferences. So throughout the day, we're, we're basically in the chapel for about two and a half hours, um, which is uh, which is difficult for some guys. I mean, some of us have more um, you know, uh, uh, patience, I guess you could say, and some guys really struggle with that, while others are in there for, for even longer. You know? So that's one of the struggles in community is being tied to a schedule, and you, know, you, have, to, you have to be there. Um, so. But we're gonna we'll talk more about the struggles uh, later in the talk. Um, uh, so we all have we all have to go through spiritual direction and also formation advising. So spiritual direction is where um, we can really open up our hearts to the spiritual director and talk about things going on within our hearts. Whereas formation advising is more of a um, uh, kind of taking a step back and looking at our formation as a whole. Uh, one is internal forum, and one is external forum. Uh, spiritual advising is internal forum, uh, formation advising is external forum. So the differences between the forums is in internal forum, um, the spiritual advisor can't say anything uh, to the people voting on you at the end of the year. Whereas in external forum, it's kind of free game. So, uh, so sometimes you have to be careful what you say in external forum. Um, but, uh, um, so that's uh, spiritual, uh, spiritual advising and formation advising. Uh, we also have parish assignments every year. So every guy is assigned to either um, a prison or a nursing home, or um, I'm at an orphanage this year, um, or a school or a parish. So throughout the year, uh, during seminary, we go to these places and kind of work on our pastoral formation. Um, and we also have house jobs. Um, so I've listed some house jobs here, um, just to give you an idea of some of the house jobs that we, we are assigned. So we have a, a master of ceremonies, a music coordinator, a computer network and website manager, a bookstore manager, a common room manager, ushers, a house and grounds coordinator, master of games, refectory coordinator, switchboard coordinator, Infirmarian, uh, so home to take care of uh, sick guys. Uh, photographer, care for classrooms. Laundry room manager, luminarian, so to turn off the lights and the windows at the end of the day. And the house librarian, so these are all health jobs that keep us busy throughout the year. Um, and uh, also courses, I wanted to give you an idea of some of the courses we take at seminary. Um, they include, but are not limited to, uh, ancient through contemporary philosophy, faith and reason, logic, ethics, metaphysics, catechism, Latin, Spanish, and Greek, epistemology, anthropology, Christian spirituality, patristics, church history, Christology, ecclesiology, sacramental theology, moral theology, Social doctrine, moral issues, bioethics, 
sacred liturgy, marriage in the family, the sacraments, Eucharist and holy orders, liturgical arts, pastoral theology, canon law, temporal goods, structure of the homily, biblical studies, and uh, last but not least, singing in the liturgy. <laughs> um, so uh, quite, a, quite an extensive list of classes. I've only covered about 5% of it. <laughs> but, um, so this year I'm taking uh, eth ethics, logic, um, uh, history of Christian spirituality, Greek, and um, what's the last class I'm taking? And uh, I'm trying to blink. It's terrible. Um, Accounting 101. Accounting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so it's great, though. I'm, I'm very much enjoying my classes this year. Um, last year was a little tough. We had Spanish and Latin at the same time. And, it was tough to fit that all in. Um, it felt like 80% of my year was spent learning languages, so glad I'm over that peak. But, um, so as you can see, the priests that are ordained from St. John's Seminary, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. The, uh, the priests that are ordained from St. John's have a really great uh, background in have a good education um, coming from that seminary. So a dress code, um, a couple years ago all the seminarians had to wear collars, but uh, as of last year they kind of changed that. Um, so now the pre-theology guys wear khakis and, and a button-down shirt, and the theology uh, seminarians wear the collars. And the reason they made that change was because um, since vocations have been increasing, uh, and the seminary is getting larger and larger, they thought it would be appropriate to designate between the two um, pre-theology guys and, and the seminarians, um, the theology seminarians. So, um, uh, before it was so small that everyone kind of wore collars. So, that's why I'm not wearing a collar today, because uh, in seminary, um, we don't wear it yet. Uh, so also, during the summer, the seminarians are assigned to a parish. I don't know if you've ever had a seminary in here, um, but uh, out of the, I think we have 14 seminarians for New Hampshire. Um, we're each assigned a parish over the summer for eight weeks. So we go to the parish and we, um, uh, we help out, you know, for eight weeks. And then we, we have August, uh, basically have August off. But, uh, uh, so that's what we do during the summer. And uh, we also have a curfew in seminary, so um, we have an 11 o'clock curfew, so we have to be back, uh, we have the night off, we have to be back by 11 o'clock. However, sometimes they'll lift that ban for the weekend, um, like this weekend, for example. Um, and I thought you might get a kick out of this. Uh, this is some expect expectations and guidelines on manners and personal care. Um, <laughs> So, some of the things included in here are uh, hair length, uh, fingernails, how short to cut your fingernails, washing of hands, cologne, uh, namely the excess of, uh, oral hygiene, when to use a handkerchief, uh, social interaction, body language, table manners, slouching in chapel, uh, etc., etc., etc. So, so, they really do form us in, in uh, in that human formation, or at least they try. You know? <laughs> um, and this, this leads me to my next point, which are challenges in the seminary. Um, I, can, I can think of two big challenges in seminary. Uh, one is, uh, I feel seminary can sometimes be like, a, it's like a boiling pot. You know? so there's 85 guys in one, uh, one space, and we're all living together, and uh, you get to know each other very well. Right over. Hi there. No, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No um, so it can be like a boiling pot. And that's kind of how it's described sometimes. So um, there are many opportunities to practice charity in seminary. <laughs> uh, because, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's wonderful, though, because you get to know the guys so well. You develop such a bond that even uh, on the tough days, you 
Um, you can see past that. And I know coming coming back this year, I was so excited to see the guys again uh, that maybe last year I really struggled with. You know, it's so good to see them again. Um, and it really is a, a really supportive community. But it can at times get uh, get a bit tense. Um, another challenge would be uh, time management. Uh, I find it's difficult to manage time in the seminary. Uh, there is so much to do uh, with all the things that I've talked about. Uh, there's a lot going on. Um, and so this, this about wraps it up, but I wanted to extend an invitation to you all. Uh, you're more than welcome to come down and visit. Um, we have Mass on Sundays. Uh, I know Derek's um, been down numerous times, um, and he's taking classes there. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but Sunday we have Mass at 10.30, followed by a, um, a plentiful brunch. Uh, so, um, you're always more than welcome. Um, and uh, please pray for, for me and all the seminarians as we continue uh, discerning our vocation. Um, and uh, are, there any, are there any questions? Yes? You said the, uh, the uh, population of the seminary was on the increase. I think I heard you say that. Uh, tell us a little bit more, more about that. And how, how large is the increase? And is it just recent and over several years or just last couple of years? I, I would say it, it was, um, I'd say over the last three or four years, I, I don't know the statistics, um, but I know the last three or four years it's increased dramatically. Um, I mean, they were down to, I think they were down to 20 seminarians. Yeah. And now it's up to 85. So there's been an, an enormous increase uh, over the past few years. Um, Again, I don't know the, I don't know the statistics um, specifically, but uh, yeah, I'd say more recently than, than, than not. Six years is a long time. What's the dropout rate? The dropout rate, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I think the dropout rate, uh, you know, uh, from first to sixth year is about 50%. Um, so if you had um, 20 guys in first first theo uh, in first pre theology. Say by the time they get to fourth theology, you're down to half, maybe maybe less. You know, maybe a little less. But I think that's typical. I mean, some you might have more some years. You might have less some years. Um, in fourth theology now we have I think six guys, um, and in first pre theology we have 27. So. Um, so it does kind of, you know, as guys further discern their call, uh, it does uh, dwindle a bit. Yes? You spoke about the end of the year voting. Is some good to say? And what I illuminate on that. Sure, yeah. So they, they vote on us. Um, and uh, um, I mean, not, not every guy uh, makes it. We had a couple of guys last year that got, you know, that. That, uh, they said this this isn't for you. So the voting is whether you stay or go. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't happen often. I mean, you really have to. <laughs> you really have to do. You know, either screw up really badly, or um, or it, it would just be obvious that there's not a calling there. You know, um, and uh, but uh, again, um, it takes a lot to to be booted. You know. Uh, priest, but, uh, yeah, it happened. in the house. Ten, yeah, like probably ten or twelve priests that live in the house that live with you, which is which is great. They're, um, they're all they're all exemplary models of what a priest should be. Um, so it's a, it's a great honor. Um, sometimes some to take a pastoral year and sort of like a year off. That's right. Yeah, some guys will take a year off um, of seminary and they'll spend a. A year in a pass in a, in a parish. Uh, uh, that could either be because they request it, or it could be because um, your vocations director would like you to do that. So uh, the reason is usually a little foggy as to why, you know, unless they're um, honest and, and open about the reason. Um, some guys will request a year off because they. Um, uh, they feel like they need more time to discern, or they want to see what it's like to be in a parish for the whole year uh, to, to live in the rectory. 
Uh, in other times, the, uh, the vocations, director, <coughs> vocations director might think you're not ready and um, that it should take, uh, it should take a year and to serve. Obviously, it's something you can quite the foundation of uh, history, philosophy, language, spiritual teachings. What is the seminary's take on like, social issues and political things that are out there? And you guys do get out on Thursday night social, or yeah. <laughs> how, how do you avoid that? Yeah, we, how ready on the highway? Right. You know, it was tough. The whole first year in seminary, I don't think I read the newspaper once. <laughs> it's uh, it's tough to keep up with that. I mean. While we're in seminary, our main focus is is really on our discernment to the calling, and so it seems like all those those you know the news and, and you know I got rid of Facebook, you know I, I don't even talk on the phone quite you know half as much as I used to. I mean I don't text anymore. So like a lot of those, uh, I mean of course it's it's good to stay updated on the issues, um, but uh, our main focus is is within the walls of the seminary. And we do take classes, though, on you know ethics and political, um, or you know bi we talk about bioethics and um, uh, morality within the culture. Um, but it is tough. To, it's tough to, to stay on top of the uh, top of the media. And, um, but we talk about it a lot. We will, uh, you know, when we have uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner together, you know. Uh, important stories will always come up, and it's interesting to hear different perspectives from different seminarians, you know, how they, what their take is on that and, and whatnot. Um, but it really is that if you have a strong foundation in your faith, then everything else will come to place. You know, all those, um, you, know, you can kind of see past all the, the muck out there, you know. Um, you um, see like quite a full plate you guys have on out there. It's Seminary, are they or uh, like a college? Are they are you accepted as far as academically is concerned, or if your grades aren't good enough, they can say, "No, oh, you have a college, but I don't think you're smart to be here." Yeah, that's a good like question. That? And how does the fund? Do they pay the diocese or somebody paying for the seminary's education? Or yeah, that's a great question. Um, the diocese, uh, you get sponsored by a diocese, basically. So, so I could have applied to any diocese in the country. But I decided since I grew up in New Hampshire, it's, it's fitting to apply for the Diocese of Manchester. Um, so you talk to the vocations director, and uh, you know through you have to get um, you know a psych eval, medical eval, um, letters of recommendation. You have to write numerous essays, and you either get accepted or not. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we get sponsored by the diocese, and it is paid for by the diocese. So when we have those seminarian collections at Mass, um, that all goes towards, um, towards that, because it costs, costs a lot of money to run this place, and um, the food alone is, is very expensive. And uh, you think of 85 guys, three meals a day, it's a nice job. Um, So the academic part of it? Oh, the academic, academic part. selection yeah. from you, know, you have trained me, you were in high school, and your grades weren't that good. Right. I don't know, you went to Pinkerton, so the product was pretty good. But. Well, um, yeah, uh, I think that does come into play a little bit, but uh, I, I don't think they place as much of an emphasis on academics within the seminary community as they would in like a, a normal college. Because it's, again, it's one of the four pillars. You know, when you go to a college, it's it's one pillar, it's academic, you know. Um, but in seminary, uh, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's, it, it's very rare that you'd ever see anyone get kicked out because of failing grades. I mean, it's happened, but, you know, if you, if you uh, there are a couple of classes that are extremely difficult, you know, and it's not uncommon to, to you know, see a C or D, and um, it's, all, it's, a, it's a big workload, so. Um, so, they are a little more lenient uh, once you're once you're in seminary um, with that. Yeah. Um, but there's after two seminaries down there. There's Saint uh, uh, John Paul in Weston, I guess, and then this one up in Brighton. Yeah, Blessed John. Is there a kind of competition between the two, or? 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's the uh, softball competition. Every year. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we have a softball game uh, twice a year with them. And we just got our trophy back this year. So <laughs> good. Um, uh, but no, I mean, uh, nothing within the realm of spirituality. <laughs> We're in full support of each other. And, um, uh, but we don't, uh, no, we don't, we don't uh, communicate a lot. I mean, we're not, uh, we don't, you know, see each other. In, in our own um, my other question was, um, you know, uh, when you come out of seminary to be to take on a parish, um, you're full of you know, you know, idealism, I guess. I'm assuming. And how does that shake down? I mean, I know this is kind of a speculation. But I mean, how does that shake down in terms of actually you know, being a diocese in place? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean like when we when we get ordained and then are out in the world, how do we deal with? Right. I, mean, in other words, I guess like you might be very uh, pro life. You know, if you're dealing with a congregation that says, well, you know, you know, it's true zone. That's not judge. Right. You need to be pro. You can be. You know, that's not true that you can't be pro choice and pro body. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And that, you know, one priest saying, well, I don't want to violate anybody's gaze. So another priest is saying, well, you know, sin is sin. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And I think that's, that's part of the reason that uh, our parish, our summer assignments are so valuable because when we spend the, su uh, the summer in a parish, we really get to see. You know, well, you know, after six years, we're in six different parishes with, for eight weeks with six different priests, and we get to see six different, con you know, uh, <coughs> congregations. And so it's uh, uh, it's great to see, you know, the variety of, of what's out there. I mean, some priests are more left, some priests are more right, and so you, we get formed, we we build a love for Jesus, and. Um, Again, I think if you have a strong foundation of, of um, a love for, for God and a love for the church, then everything else I think falls into place. Um, and uh, does that an answer your question? Yeah, I, I think you know, there seems to be quite a, um, a range, I guess, from say say you know, an older priest to a younger one. Right. And what they say and how they conduct their their masses. So I, I'm just I'm just curious. You know, the, you know coming out of seminary, you know, a younger younger man, you know, kind of basically say, listen, this is our faith, and let's you know let's practice it. Right. I'm representing the faith, and you know it's different than say you know a parish that you know, says, well. Or as a community, I get a community that has a community that says, well, you know, you know church on Sunday and softball and my other life is, you know, six, six and seven, eight days. Right? Yeah. So it's, you know, like, it's that kind of range. I guess it's so, does your own idealism, you know, kind of hold some kind of realization? Right. Well, I think when we get out there, when we're ordained, you know, we'll become an associate first, and at that point, we are kind of under the obedience of the, uh, the pastor. You know, so we're, we're obedient to the pastor, and then someday when we get uh, you know, become pastors, we have a little more we let um, a little more reign as to um, how we conduct you know the parish, and, and um, we get to insert um, a far more. Uh, we have a little more say as to what goes on, you know. Um, but yeah, there's there's a wide variety of, um, you know, many different priests and many different styles. Um, for sure. But uh, I was just having this conversation with someone a few weeks ago, and I, and I said I think uh, I, I, I don't I, I personally don't I don't mind I don't care how a priest. Uh, um, Conducts his ministry as long as he has a love, you know, as long as his heart's in the right place. It's, uh, I think that's the most important thing. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> 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 
deal with that when you get out there. Because like you said, there are people from all the way on the left, all the way on the right, and everybody from these days thinks they're right and the way out the wrong. Yeah. And when you put that collar on, you can start smacking in the middle and they won't really right. decide between them to they, yeah. they give you that kind of formation. Right. I think it's trial by fire. You get out there and you uh, you learn quickly. In seminary, we are, you know, there's there's a wide variety of opinions even within seminary. So we have six years to deal with it on a deep level in seminary. Um, so we hear uh, all sorts of things, you know. And, and so um, when we get out there, we have some sense of uh, some of the some of the viewpoints and what on the different. Uh, but we don't take a class on. Oh, class yeah. on conflict resolution. Yeah, yeah. How did you discern which one of the two seminaries you were going to go to? The well, based I like, on location or based on? Yeah, location. I like Boston, and it was close to home. Okay. And typically, the bishop would send you. You wouldn't have a choice. And I think when it comes down to it, it's still that way. But uh, Bishop Labashi was nice enough to to ask me, you know, where I wanted to go and uh, whether my choice happened to line up with his. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, he did ask me and I, I told him St. John's. Um, so I think there's a little more freedom in, in that these days. Paul, oh, <clears throat> they've been joking about accounting 101, but is there any accounting or management or business uh, yeah, part there of is. the whole program? Yeah, it's a uh, temp. Temporal, good, temporal goods. They talk about how to manage a parish. Yeah, because that's that's a that's a huge part of being a pastor. I mean, that's a big part of your job. Yeah. So. Well, um, I'm going to end uh, by playing Ave Maria. Uh, seems fitting for today. Um, so I just want to thank you all again for for coming and being so attentive. Um, and I don't do this often, so this is this was great for me. So I appreciate the. Uh, the audience. So, thank you. Thank you.